<laughs> what will your answer be, huh? Are you ready? <laughs> I am ready. That's been the theme throughout the week. I want to again express my appreciation for each and every uh, one of you, the encouragement that you've given to me, the uh, prayers that were worded, the songs that were sung, the good lesson, congratulatory, I guess, to me, and I appreciate it. Uh, hopefully, we can all improve day in and day out. So many things to say. But uh, I appreciate you so much. I ho if you've just got half of what the boost of what I have gotten from this week, then uh, we've accomplished great things. Are you ready? Thanksgiving's coming. Probably families have already prepared or talked about where they're going to have Thanksgiving. Have you got the turkey ready? <laughs> Is the dressing ready? Santa Claus is coming too this year. At least that fictitious, I shouldn't say that out loud, should I? That fictitious character, he's coming. We get excited about that. We were talking a while back about uh, different things concerning the church, and it seems like we were talking about having a uh, uh, get-togethers and maybe Bible study during the week or something like that and and somebody says well we don't do any of that and I said well I think it was last year come to think of it uh, well I guess it was in uh, March because we had Larry Arbor for a meeting in April and uh, I spoke up and I said well we're having a gospel meeting come coming up the reply was I hate to tell that person, but heaven's not going to be theirs unless they change. Every now and then we'll get an announcement or see something announced that so and so is going to be in Tulsa. I don't know. I, I'm not a music fan, but sometimes these these uh, musicians come to Tulsa and folks get all excited and they get their tickets in advance and they're ready to go and. You know, are you, are you going? Are you ready? Are you, come go with me. I would imagine that there, have, there are those that are members here that are able to get out. They haven't been to a single service, maybe Sunday. Haven't been, attended the gospel meeting. They kind of have that attitude of gospel meeting. What is that? Well, that's where you learn, that's where you encourage, that's where you strengthen. As we, we as preachers say, that's where you get your battery charged. And we need our batteries charged, don't we, every day. Book of First Thessalonians, the theme throughout is Christ is coming. He's coming. He's coming. Are you ready? There's some today, religiously speaking, that are fanatics on the subject of Christ's second coming. They are date setters. And it's, it's always interesting to me that these people that decide that Christ is coming at such and such a time, they want to sell their material goods. And I'm thinking, well, why if he's coming? Those things are not going to be any good to anybody. Uh, so that tells you right up front that they really don't believe that he's coming on the date that they set. You know, if they'll keep setting dates and set every date, every every date from here to the end of time when he does come, they'll get it right one time. And you know, you 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 run into folks that they'll come up with all kinds of theories, and they'll go back and they'll dig out of the out of the Old Testament and. They'll take things out of context and say, that's when he's coming, that's when he's coming. The uh, date setters have always been there. There's, someone says that there's one in every 25 verses in the New Testament that deals directly or indirectly with the coming of Christ. He's coming back. 
You know, 1 Thessalonians, well, go ahead and open your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians. I'm going to read several verses throughout the lesson uh, from there. <clears throat> In 1 Thessalonians 1, verses 9 and 10, Genuine conversion involves one in waiting for the Lord's return. And so you begin to explore the meaning of what, what does it mean here, waiting for the Lord's return. Well, obviously you're expecting it. You're, you're ready. You're, you're ready for His return. In 1 Thessalonians 1, verses 9 and 10, we read, For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how you turn to God from idols and serve the living and true God, and to wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Jesus is coming. This gospel meeting has been wonderful. Where is everybody? Where are they? There are congregations that have lectureships. Where are they? There's one starting Sunday, isn't it? In Independence, Missouri. You're not far away. How many are going? How many have prepared? We were talking in the back a little bit about Jamaica, and I've mentioned it several times. I had had a couple of, to go with us to Jamaica one year, and they both worked. They took their vacation time to go to Jamaica and knock on doors and do Bible studies. Did an excellent job. Paid their own way, by the way, too. I think it was about uh, $1,100 a piece at that time. And that's unheard of from folks. Well, it's going to, we're going to do what? You want me to go where? And it's going to cost me something? We were told the first time we went to Jamaica in a preliminary meeting, if you fear for your life, don't go. Life is, or death is part of life, isn't it? You know, the Lord is coming. The Lord himself said that he was coming back. John 14, 1 through 3 says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Watch this. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. He wants us to be ready. We have to get ready, just like preparing for Thanksgiving, for Santa Claus, for birthdays, uh, family coming to visit, whatever it might be. We prepare. We get ready for it. Someone says that most folks today spend more money and more time plan planning their annual vacation than they do preparing for heaven. Now that's sad. Fun and games. We need vacations, we understand that, but what's, most, what's the most important thing? Remember in Acts chapter 1, after Jesus had uh, uh, risen from the dead, and now he had been in contact with his disciples again, and his ascension back into heaven takes place in chapter 1 of Acts, verses 11 and 12, and the angel declared that he's coming back. I often think of this if I would have, would have been present then, and, and from a human standpoint, you know, sometimes our mouth drops open, we're just in awe at what we're seeing. You know, your mouth drops open as you watch Jesus ascend up into heaven. You remember all of the things that he taught you, you remember all of the sufferings and the crucifixion and them burying him in the tomb and him rising the, the third day and, and then meeting him again. And now here he goes to heaven. But the angel assures us he's coming back in, in chapter 1 of Acts, verses 11 and 12. He says, You men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up 
from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. And then it says, Then they returned, or then returned they to, unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. Can you imagine the conversation that they had on their return home? We probably talk as we leave services and each and every time we meet. We talk on the way home about this, that, and the other. Now, I don't mean roast the the, the uh, Bible class teacher and the preacher and the song leader. But we do have some comments that we make, and we talk a little bit about it. And Can you imagine the conversation as, after Jesus had, had uh, ascended up into heaven? He's coming. He's coming back. Or he came, and he, he, he's, he went back into heaven, and he's coming back again. The coming of Christ is just as definite, just as sure as death is going to come. It is appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment. Uh, uh, Hebrews 9, 27 says, verse 28, says, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. He's going to appear again. Just as they saw him ascend up into heaven, he's coming back in like manner. It's going to be in an instant, twinkling of an eye, but maybe our mouths will have time to drop open. <laughs> he's coming back. The resurrection of Christ and God's testimony that Jesus is his son is proof of that. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 14 says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will, will God bring with him. We're familiar with Acts 17, verse 30, says the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, and then he tells us why, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead. Christ is coming. Are we ready? Are we prepared? Are we making the proper preparation? We are familiar with the uh, parable of the the, the ten virgins, five were wise and five were foolish. Oh, they, was, they were waiting on his coming, but they weren't prepared. Five of them were not. They didn't have the oil in their vessels. They were not in it for the long haul. Well, if he comes today, you know, okay, but, you know, I've got to keep uh, uh, looking for him over and over. Yes, need to be prepared every day. It reminds me of, this This will date this because now we have baptistry clothes, or baptismal clothes, uh, but there was one gentleman that attended services with his wife, and he did quite regularly, Pretty, he was pretty faithful in attendance, wasn't a member. They had a gospel meeting, and sure enough, when the invitation song was sung, he went forward, and he said to his wife, Honey, I guess you're going to have to run home and get me a change of clothes. She said, I've had them in the car for the last 30 years. She was prepared. She knew that he was going to obey the gospel. What kind of preparation do we make? You know, it's like they say, uh, you're 100% you're sure that it's going to rain, but... You don't take your umbrella with you. <laughs> and, you know, that's, that's Oklahoma weatherman, right? <laughs> but are we ready? Are we ready for his return? Do we have the clothes in the trunk, so to speak? You know, you think about uh, 1 Thessalonians 4.16. When Christ returns, God is going to announce it. It says the trump of God. The, the, the verse reads, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the ar archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Dead are going to be raised, and 
You know, that's, that's kind of difficult for us to, to understand. None of us have ever seen anyone <clears throat> seen anyone uh, uh, risen, uh, risen from the dead. And, and uh, it's interesting that those that claim that, it, that they can perform miracles today, if that were so, what would be the purpose of hospitals? What would be the purpose of doctors? Well, I'd look. I'd be looking up one of those folks that could could cure me, wouldn't you? Of course we would. But the truth is, they can't do those things. I talked. I think I mentioned in one of the lessons about the deadly poison is not supposed to hurt them either. So if you hear one of them claim that they can perform miracles, you ought to carry or you ought to be prepared or be ready. Carry a, a bottle with some poison in it around with you all the time. Say, here, drink this. Hey, look at you like you lost your mind. Because they know they can't do those things. Another thing that's going to happen when Christ returns is this earthly temporal system is going to be terminated. They, Second Peter talks about the, uh, the Lord's return some as well and Chapter 3, verses 5 through 12, talks about some are willingly, willingly ignorant. They know better, but they just choose to be ignorant. And it says in verse 8 of 2 Peter 3, Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, but one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. But I like verse 9. It says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise. promise. As some men count slackness, but His long-suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He says He's coming back. He's going to fulfill that promise. Am I ready? Am I prepared? It tells us in verse 10 of 2 Peter 3, The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night which the heavens shall pass away with great noise, the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? I ought to be prepared, shouldn't I? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And then we have those that teach the popular false doctrine of premillennialism. The Lord's going to come back to the earth. He's going to reign for a thousand years. I hate to tell you, when the Lord comes back, this earth and this everything that we see out there is going to be burned up. The Bible says that. Your know, brother Foy Wallace did great things in writing and fighting um, premillennialism <clears throat> when it began to be so popular years and years ago. I guess it was probably in the 50s. And uh, any of you that have read any of his material, he says that what he'll, he'll give you the definition of premillennialism. He says pre means before, millennial means a thousand. And ism means it ain't so. Denominationalism, it ain't so. Premillennialism ain't so. Judgment Day, the day of the Lord, is going to be a reality when the Lord comes. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the Judgment Day? It's going to be real one, time, one day. We're going to have to answer to God. We're going to have to stand before Him in judgment. We're going to give an account of things that we've done or not done. 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 1 through 3 says, But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, they shall not escape. We're not going to escape. 
And it's going to come. You know, if we were ready for the thief at night, he wouldn't steal anything from me, I know. I, I like a sign. One of our uh, guys we mow his yard, I like his sign on his gate. It says, Beware of. And it says, Just beware. <laughs> you know, if I know the thief's coming, I won't be ready for him. Somebody stole some money from mom one time and she thought she knew who it was. They had uh, come into her apartment that she was renting and stole some money and and uh, she was pretty sure that it was those folks. So several days uh, for several hours during the day, I'd park my car somewhere down the block and walk over and go inside of her house and here I'd see it. I was waiting. They didn't come. They probably knew I was there. But um, he's going to come, and we don't know when. All nations are going to be present. How many times have we studied and read uh, Matthew chapter 25 and telling us that all nations shall be gathered before him, and then the separation is going to take place? He's going to separate the right hand, the left hand, the sheep from the goats. Which, which side are we on right now? We're ready for one or the other. Am I ready to be with the sheep? Or am I ready to be with the goats? All nations, that's everyone that's ever lived or ever will live. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 1 through 4 and also Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 7 through 9 indicates that the evil ones are going to be destroyed. The evil ones are not ready. You, have, you ever had anyone make fun of you being a Christian or make fun of uh, anything religiously speaking? And, you know, how many times do we hear people say they don't believe in hell? They don't believe a loving God would send anyone to hell. Well, they're right. He's a loving God. He's not going to send anyone to hell. You make that choice yourself. You have made that choice. Just like you make the choice in being ready for His return. So, yes, our loving God, He wouldn't be a loving God if He gave us a, a uh, rules to follow and we had to obey what he said, and by obedience we're going to have the joys of heaven, he wouldn't be a loving God if he gave heaven to those that don't obey. You know, if there is such a thing as love, and there is, that demands that there is such a thing as hate. If a person's going to be saved, and they are, then that demands that some are going to be lost. Matthew seven thirteen and 14, Jesus says that few will be that find the straight and narrow way. I think I was telling Chuck the other day, we used to use that phrase or, or ask this question to people trying to get Bible studies sometimes. Um, just simply, do you believe that most people are going to, to be lost? You'd be surprised. People say, oh, no, I think most people are going to heaven. Well, do you know what the Bible says about that? You know, that's very simple to, to explain. They can read it for themselves. They know what many and they know what few is. Many are going to go the uh, uh, broad and, and wide way, and there will be few that go the straight and narrow way. And we make the choice. We decide. Prepared people wait for the Lord's coming. They keep on waiting. You know, the... The Greek uh, verbs are interesting when you... I don't know anything about Greek, but I know this, I think. <laughs> Chuck's an expert in Greek, I'm sure, and, and Paul, too. Um, but they generally mean... The, the Greek verbs generally mean continuous action. Keep on waiting. Am I keeping on waiting? Am I watching? Am I looking? It tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5, 6, Therefore let us not sleep as do others, 
But let us watch and be sober. I, I guess I've developed a habit, at least in my personal prayers, and into the prayer I ask the Lord to come quickly. You ever think about that? Are you ready for Him? If so, you, you would think that too. Lord, come quickly. And then I think too sometimes, someone asked me this question one time, if you, could, if you had the power to, to uh, hit a, uh, a button as we do sometimes, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't know what you call it, it's a button anyway. You press the, like on the elevator, you press your number. If you had the power that, that you could say at any time, Lord, come now, would you press that button right now? Have you ever thought about that? I have, and I, my first thought was, yes, I'd press it. And then I got to thinking, now, wait a minute. I know some people that haven't obeyed the gospel that I'd like to see them obey the gospel. Then I would think, well, I know some folks that have obeyed the gospel and they're not faithful. I'd like for them to come back. And then I would finally come to the conclusion, no, I would not press the button. I, I'm glad the Lord is in control there. He knows, but He's going to press that button one day and Jesus is going to ascend just like the, uh, that he, just like He ascended the same way that He went up into heaven, He's coming back in, in Acts chapter 1. You know, those that have not obeyed the gospel... 2 Thessalonians 1, 7 through 10 says that they're going to be lost just like those that have never heard are going to be lost. We have a way. The Lord has given us our marching orders to take the gospel to others. And it's really sad when someone passes on that have not obeyed the gospel. Have you ever thought about that at funerals? It seems you can go to now, we, we're not the judge. I understand that. We go to funerals that it seems that person has been a faithful uh, Christian. And folks just kind of have a uh, congenial and satisfied attitude. But you go to one that one has not obeyed the gospel, and I've heard them just wail and carry on and fall out in the aisles and all kinds of things and I'm thinking they weren't prepared. Someone described his passing from this life as a graduation. He graduated. She graduated today. Nothing to be sad about. We're going, we're going to miss them. We're going to have to adjust our lives but you know what's better for them? We wouldn't ask them to come back for a moment when we begin to think about heaven and it's theirs. But are you ready? The second coming, are we waiting on it? Are we watching? Are we watching for His coming? Matthew 24, verse 42 says, Watch therefore, for you know not what the hour of the Lord doth come. Verse 44 says, Therefore be ye also ready. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. He's coming back, and I need to be prepared all the time. Every day of the week, seven days a week. He's going to come, and He's going to eternally save those that are looking for Him and waiting and watching. Eternity. Is there any way for us to even understand that? Brother John Renshaw, one of my instructors, used to say, imagine this for just a moment. The whole ball of the earth is made out of brass. And he says there's a little old bitty sparrow. And every thousand years as he circles the earth, one of his wings just barely tipped the edge of that brass world. And he said, when he is completely disintegrated the brass ball of the earth 
eternity won't even have begun. There's no way to measure it. No way whatsoever. Remember, I talked about Paul. He said, I'm now ready to be offered in 2 Timothy chapter 4. And he said, why? In verse verse 7 and 8, or verse 7, he says, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. And verse 8 says, Henceforth, because of this, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Am I ready? Paul was ready. Am I ready for the Lord to return? Lord, come quickly. Come quickly. The Lord's people... They know that they cannot know when Christ shall come. We're not date setters. But we are ready to meet Him. What does that song go? Uh, I long to meet Him face to face. I can't, I'm not going to sing it, but I almost can't think of the words. But you think of that. Meeting Him face to face. One day it's going to be a reality. Well, unless and until mankind obeys the gospel, then they are unprepared to meet the Lord. (coughs) Have you obeyed the gospel? What do you mean, obey the gospel? I mean obey His commands, His plan of salvation. His plan of salvation is not what man has come up with, just pray the sinner's prayer. We've asked time and time again throughout the ages, many have asked, Where is that in the Scriptures? Well, if it's in the Scriptures, we want to obey it, don't we? As I was growing up as a kid, at that time there was a fellow on television from Tulsa, Oklahoma. (laughs) Just lay your hand on the television. And I pray for you. Ain't so. And where is that in the Scriptures? We must be faithful to Christ. We must obey the gospel. God's plan of salvation is very simple. I I remember on one occasion there was a a young man that had, he was a new convert, and one of the elders asked him would he do the devotional on Wednesday night and present the invitation. And I'll never forget as long as I live with him trying to get the right words out and 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 he hit the nail right on the head when he said all you have to do is and he gave the plan of salvation all you have to do is obey the gospel hear the word of god believe repent of your sins confess that jesus christ is god's son be baptized for the remission of your sins live a faithful life that's all you have to do What's difficult about that? Are you ready? Have you wandered from Christ? If so, you're not ready. But you can become ready tonight. We always encourage folks to obey the gospel. We always encourage people to come back, make things right with God. Another thing that doesn't really have to do with the lesson is what I think about these things from time to time. And I have to say I'm guilty of this probably just like some of you are. Come Sunday and we, we say something like, uh, we're going to church. No, we're going to worship. Let's get our, our language back like it should be. Let's be careful what we say, what we repeat. I understand when someone says they're going to church, where, they're, where they are going, but we're going to worship. Always, always second guess yourself. Always go to the scriptures and study the scriptures as if you know nothing about it and so that you will know without a shadow of a doubt that what you are doing is right. Don't listen to what I say. Don't listen to what others say and just obey for that reason but confirm it in the scriptures. You have an opportunity to get ready one more time tonight as together we stand and sing.
Sunday, you'll stand at the bar all night.